One of the things that I love about the Gudo engine is how it stores 3D rotations. Instead of using Eulers or Quaternions, it uses transformation matrices. In the last devlog, I glossed over some of the details on how the player pad keeps track of rotation and moves in its local coordinate system. So I thought I'd create a, a follow-up video to last week's just to explain how transformation uh, matrices work in a little more detail. You don't have to know all the nooks and crannies of how they work or how every method works. Just getting a general understanding of what's happening under the hood can really save you a lot of frustration in the long run. Transforms in Godot are a matrix of four rows and three columns. Now the first three rows of this matrix are called the basis and what they represent is the directions of the local axes. Now if you've done linear algebra in university you'd be familiar with this concept. Now what a basis is is a set of vectors that span a given set which means that any linear combination of these vectors can form any other vector within the set that they span. Another property of them is that in an n-dimensional set there's a n vectors which means if you want to describe any point in 3d space you need a minimum of three vectors and the last property of basis vectors is that they're orthonormal which means they're all at 90 degrees to each other and that they have unit length now the fourth row of the transform matrix is the origin what this represents is the location of the node as offset from its parent node now if there's no parent node then it's then the parent is the root node which has its coordinates at the origin you can think of it that way show you how it works on the whiteboard just explain how things work in global and local coordinates how rotations work using rotation matrices and in the end i'll show you a bit of simple code and and demonstrate how they work using the godot editor these are the global axes now godot's convention is that the y the y-axis is up. So the vector 0, 0, 1, which is in the positive z direction, you can think of that as north. And likewise, 0, 0, minus 1, you can think of that as south. These are global directions. Similarly, in the x direction, the global x, you can think of minus 1, 0, 0, or as it's represented in Godot as vector three dot left, you can think of that as the global west direction. And one zero zero to, towards the right, that represents the global east. And zero one zero, you can think of that as representing the zenith. And zero minus one zero, representing the nadir. Excuse the mess. Now let's look at an object defined by a point here. Its transform has four vectors. The fourth vector is the origin, which represents the location in 3D space relative to its parent spaces. But for this example, let's just assume that it has no parent. So it's relative to the global coordinates, which means if it's located at say two, zero, one, then it's located two units east and one unit north. So it's somewhere towards the northeast. The other three vectors represents its orientation or its rotation so you have now for a minute let's assume that they're aligned let's assume that there's no rotation on the node so these three vectors are the basis of this transform but what do they represent they don't represent global coordinates so this x direction now it might be aligned with this one here so they might be parallel to each other but what it actually represents is the local coordinates left and right. Similarly, Z is forward and back. Y is up and down. Now, if we were to rotate this transform such that the Z now points here and X points this way, Z now no longer points 
in this case towards the south, it actually points towards the west. But it's still forward relative to uh, that transform. Imagine that's the direction it's facing. What you need to understand is, how do we move in this local space? Using the move and collide function in Godot, what it actually does is, it uses a global relative vector, which means if we were to pass in for the sake of argument and say we're just moving it by the vector 102, what actually happens is this origin is offset by 102. And thus its new position will be 303. Three. We can say that's what's happening. I'll show you this on the Godot editor. Notice this kinematic body. It's got a translation, rotation, and it's transform. So the first three rows represents the basis matrix, and the last row represents the origin. And it's at zero, zero. But let's say we just move it by the vector one, two, three. And you can see that the origin is now at one, two, three. It's moved oh, three units towards the north, two units upwards, that's the zenith, and one unit east. We'll just say that for now. And if we then move and collide it by another vector called one, 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 basically add each coordinate to the origin. Okay, that much is obvious. Well, that makes sense, but how do we handle rotations? If the basis is aligned with the global coordinates, which means if the X row is aligned with East, so it's just one zero zero, if up is aligned with Zenith with zero one zero, and if the Z is aligned with the North direction, zero zero one, that's just an identity matrix. So how do rotations work? Well, they work through matrix multiplication. And the way this happens is you multiply your basis matrix, which represents your axes, by a transformation matrix, which represents a rotation about one of these axes. Now, the direction of the rotation is, if you recall back to physics, is your right-hand rule. You point your thumb in the direction, in the axis of rotation, and curl your fingers. So if we were rotating about the y-axis, which means we're looking up and rotating in the xz plane, then the positive rotation is anti-clockwise, looking down. So let's say for example, we want to rotate about the y-axis by 30 degrees. What happens is we multiply the basis matrix by the rotation matrix. Cosine of 30 degrees is root three on two, which is let's say 0.87, zero, zero, one, zero. Now notice that the axis of rotation is unchanged. So this row doesn't change when we're rotating about it. We're only changing the other two rows. So sine theta, uh, sine 30 degrees in this case is a half. Here is minus a half, zero. And now you just do your matrix multiplication, which in this case, because we're starting with the identity matrix, it's just a direct copy. Just a minor correction. The bases are actually columns, X, Y, and Z, not rows. And so this is our new transform. If you look at it in the Godot engine, let's apply a rotation of 30 degrees about the Y axis. And as you can see, we get the same matrix back. Now note that it looks transposed but that's because the way it's represented is the rows go vertically down and each row is actually a column. So this is the first, this is the X basis, this is the Y and this is the Z. And looking at the local axes, this makes sense. The X, local X basis is pointing in the uh, negative Z and positive x direction. Z, note the global gimbal, positive Z and positive x direction here. And that's basically how it works. So what if we wanted to rotate it by 30 degrees again? Well, we take this basis and multiply it by the same uh, transformation matrix. And if you do this matrix multiplication, you get this result here. And this makes sense because 
Rotating by 30 degrees twice is the same as rotating by 60 degrees. And cosine of 60 is a half. Uh, sine of 60 is root 3 on 2, which is 0.87, and so on. And if you were to go back to the Godot engine, and now rotate by another 30 degrees, we get the same matrix, but keep in mind it's transposed here in this display. So now we know how rotations works, but how do we move in local coordinates? How do we move forward uh, instead of moving north if we pass a vector? Let's have a look at this simple code first. This code means I can rotate the object about the Y axis and move it with, with the arrow keys. Now note this function here, rotate object local vector three dot up. What rotate object local does is it transforms this vector zero one zero, the global up vector that points towards the zenith and it transforms it into the basis of the object that is being rotated. In this case, what this is returning is actually the basis Y vector. So it's rotating about its local Y axis. But how does this happen and how do you use it? Well, let's see the problem with passing global coordinates, which I showed earlier. Now the cube is moving with the arrow keys as we want. But now if we rotate it, it's still moving in global coordinates. As I just showed earlier, we're only affecting the origin and we're not taking into account the orientation, the local orientation of the object. So merely passing in a movement vector without transforming it into the local basis does not work. All right, so we know this code doesn't work. Let's take a look at this one. Now in this one, we take uh, each input and we move it not by the global vectors, vector three up, down, left, right, what have you. Those are in global space but we move it by the basis, which is what you should be doing. So left and right moves by the X column of the basis and up and down moves using the Z column of the basis because we're moving in the X Z plane. This makes sense, but it depends on what the intention of the game is. So let's see how this works. And now, as you can see, the movement of the cube obeys the rotation, the local rotation. And you can see this because I'm rotating and moving at the same time. So now I'm only pressing up to move forward and the cube follows my heading. This works fine in this instance. A couple of things are wrong with it. One is the code smell. It does not look pretty. The other one is if you're not receiving inputs from a keyboard and rather you're getting a composite direction, like from a touch joystick, as I demonstrated last week, and you need to correct for magnitudes, this is not a good way of doing it. So before we discuss the solution, let's have a look at what's actually happening. What's happening under the hood is that when you give a vector to the basis, the vector is being multiplied by the basis matrix. And what this does is it returns a vector that was originally in global coordinates and now transformed into local coordinates. Now, when we're dealing with the basic directions of left, right, up, down, this is actually quite trivial. So let's say we want of this object's orientation, which remember we rotated uh, by 30 degrees about the Y axis. If you do this matrix multiplication, what this does is it just returns the first column. This is intuitive, right? One zero zero is or vector three dot right. And the right direction, the right local direction is represented by this vector. And similarly, if we had done zero one zero, we would have returned the middle column, the Y direction. And zero zero one, which means the forward direction would have returned the third column of the basis. So then why does it matter? Well, as I mentioned earlier, what happens if we have a more complex vector? not one that one that is received from an input that has uh, ordinates in the x y and z well the answer is the same let's say we're pushing the up arrow key and the left arrow key that would be minus zero one and if you were to multiply this out you get this vector here negative 0.37 0 and 1.37 
and that will be the equivalent of moving forward and to the left at the same time. Now the issue is, matrix multiplication is not implemented directly as far as I know. So it's a good idea to write your own function that does this for you. How do we do that? Well, if you look closely, you can see that this vector here, this vector here, sorry, is exactly the same as, and this is how matrix multiplication works, this number multiplied by this column plus this number multiplied by this column plus this number multiplied by this column. And so you can simply write a function here, vector three transformed vector, takes in the input vector that you want transformed, the basis you want to transform it by, and what you return here is just a new vector three, take the x ordinate, the x component of the vector, multiply it by the x column of the basis, etc, etc, and you get returned the transformed vector. You can pass that into the move and collide function based on the global movement input that you received, and that's that. So let's have a look at how this code works. And again, I am steering towards the left and pushing the up arrow key moving forward. So the movement of the of the cube obeys the orient its own orientation. All right, thank you for watching. I hope you took something away from that. I felt that in my last episode, I sort of glossed over how transforms work. And if you don't have a linear algebra background, it can be quite a difficult subject to break into. Now, I think it's a great system. I think Godot made a great choice by using transformation matrices. If you know anything about 3D rotations, you know oil angles don't work because of the phenomenon of gimbal lock. If you rotate by 90 degrees, two of your planes align and you lose that the rotation in one of the planes. And I think it's a better system than quaternions. Now, quaternions have two problems. It's quite difficult to understand how they work because they are four dimensional and it's not something I formally studied. So I struggle to understand them myself. And the other one is quaternions always interpolate the shortest distance between two angles. This is a strength as well as a weakness. On the one hand, they're great for interpolating very smoothly, such as with a camera movement. But on the other hand, let's say you wanted to move by an angle greater than 180 degrees in a certain direction. Let's say you wanted to rotate by 270. Well, if you do that with quaternions, what's actually going to happen is you're going to rotate by minus 90. So you'd have to find workarounds for that. If you have any questions, comments, suggestions, uh, put them in that little box down below. If you enjoyed this video, please hit like, subscribe and hit the bell as well. And I'll see you next week when I return to my regular devlogs and tutorials where I'll be covering touch camera movements next. Thank you guys.